Okay, we just did a sound check test and sorry about the echo. This room has, it doesn't have a lot of furniture, but welcome back, tassels. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sassarelli and Cheese, and if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back, bitch. How you doing? What are you up to? Tell me, tell me in the comments. Feels like we're slipping like this. I have a little list here. Does it have anything to do with what we're about to talk about today? No. So we're just gonna... <laughs> this is gonna be a two-part video. So part one is gonna be about having friends that pretend to be your friends that don't really even support you, but they pretend to support you. We're talking about fake ass bitches. That's what we're gonna talk about. Recently, I've had to break up with a best friend and a boyfriend. <laughs> That's right, people. I was dating somebody. Oh, shit. And I was basically dating my best friend. That was weird. Wasn't even getting anything good out of it either, so let's get into it, shall we? Two years ago. <laughs> let's go back to the beginning. <sighs> Two years ago. Two years ago, I became friends with this girl, and let's talk about the first time we ever met in real life. First of all, I met this person on a live streaming website uh, during COVID. So it was a little bit weird meeting up with people at that time because we were all afraid we were gonna die from a fucking cold. So it took a few months for us to actually meet, but I had reached out to her and was like, hey, I think we live down the street from each other. We should hang out, right? And she never replied really. I gave her my phone number. She messaged me on her birthday that year, which was a few days after mine. She messaged me on her birthday that she had a live stream happening and she was trying to get a bunch of gifts, right? You were gonna message me for that? I just ignored it because I was like, I'm not giving you my beans if you're not even willing to come into my broadcast. First red flag probably, wow. After that, I didn't even really try to pursue a friendship with her because like, if you don't want to hang out with me, I don't want to hang out with you, right? We ain't got time for that. We're in our, at this time, I was in my late 20s. I don't, you know. One day I was live streaming on this app and one of our mutual fans came into my broadcast and was like, Sassy Cass, so-and-so needs your help. She needs to go to the hospital. And I was like, so-and-so has my phone number. If she needs help, she could message me her damn self. And I was such an asshole about it. I'm an asshole. Because that's some real shit. If you need help, message me. He was like, no, please, please, message her. Message her, see if she needs your help. She hasn't done this in a couple of days and I'm just really worried about her. What a nice guy, he was such a nice fan. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll do that then. So I swiped up out of my broadcast for a sec, messenger, hey, one of our fans says you need help. Are you good? Do you need my help? Click, I came back. I'm like, we'll see what she says. Sure enough. She's like, yeah, I need your help. Please come pick me up, here's my address. Okay, come pick you up, came and pick her up. She's sick as a dog, we didn't even recognize her. First of all, at the time she was wearing a wig trying to tell everybody it was just her real hair. Bitch, I know that's not your real hair. Anybody who's anybody knows that's a fake ass fucking wig of hair. Anyways, I see her for the first time looking dead. I take her to the hospital, and that's not the first time I took her to the hospital. I took her to the hospital multiple times. And then I suddenly became her chauffeur. And so, you know, <laughs> I wasn't even getting paid for it. At the time, I was just, you know, I just, she didn't like to drive. She had gotten into a car accident. She got into a drug driving car accident near Pi. Again, neither here nor there. This person pretended to lift me up. She is the type of person to keep her friends close and her enemies closer. And I, at the time, questioned, because I was like, how long have you lived here in Las Vegas? She said five years. And at that time I had questioned like, how are you living in this city for five years and you don't have any friends? Because she had expressed that she didn't have any friends. And I just chalked it up to she was sick the whole time dealing with her sickness and her husband and her were just doing whatever, you know, because she had a husband at one time. I never met the guy because they were getting divorced when I met him. Anyways, turns out she didn't have friends. I became friends with her. We were friending, doing friend stuff. 
you know, for the most part, we would like to go and create content together. At the time, she was like very, at the time, I thought she was being very generous. She would take us out on little excursions and I was always so grateful. That's why it pissed me off at the end. This bitch tried to hold it against me. This girl would take us out and buy us random shit. You know, we would go to Walmart and she'd get me a bunch of random shit I didn't need, but like kind of wanted. And she's like, you want this? I'll buy it for you, you know? But let me just preface that this is a trust fund bitch. She's a trust fund kid. She just knows, swipe the card, baby. There's always money there, you know? She's one of those. Don't know what that's like. And I remember one time, another red flag, that we were leaving one of these shopping excursions that she had bought me some random things that I had needed. You know, I don't know why I was such a broke bitch. I had a nice job, but I was paying for apartments by myself. I was dealing with adulthood, I guess. And you know what, she had the means. I at the time didn't know that she was like a spoiled rotten brat. But I did figure that out later. Few, there's so many red flags. We we're walking out of a Walmart once and she bought me some stuff that I needed and she goes, you know, I used to donate to a charity every year or something for, you know, children in need or teenagers in need. And it's like I get to support you directly. Did you just call me a charity case? I literally looked at her like, oh my. God, you just called me a charity case in my fucking face? I remember just going home and feeling dirty. But I shook it off because I was like, I feel like her intentions, I thought her intentions were good. <laughs> she got me into collecting these damn squishmallows for a while. We were fucking hunting these damn stuffed animals down. And I was like willing to spend my last fucking dollar on these damn squishmallows. I have a semi-addictive personality. I've never done drugs besides weed and fucking psychedelics. People troll me on the internet saying that I'm some sort of druggie, okay? <laughs> and I'm not. But I am addicted to buying things, maybe. At the time I was because that was her shtick, right? So I apparently tend to mirror people. I think I'm autistic, but that's for another time. We were collecting these damn squishmallows and we go and check out this Target. And I remember we turned the corner and I turned the corner first and saw this fucking toast squishmallow, this fucking big toast avocado squishmallow. There was only one and I touched it first, so it was mine. She threw a fit and I always chalk this up to like only child syndrome because she was an only child and never knew what it was like to share. So I experienced times in our friendship where she was like jealous of me for getting things with, and she didn't get them. And I was confused because she could literally have the whole world and was still not happy. Fucking crazy. And you couldn't even be happy for somebody in your life to have nice things or be happy. So we see the Squishmallow, she goes, oh my God, you have basically a cooler Squishmallow collection than I do now. And I'm the one who got you into this. And I've been collecting these for years. And I just remember that when we walked out of this store, I felt dirty. I didn't want to fucking buy that damn Squishmallow. And I did. And then later that week, like the next day, two days after, again, I would literally spend my fucking last dollars on these stupid ass stuffed animals. I would fucking go to a Target, went to the fucking Target near my work at the time, and they had one and I bought it for her and when I brought it to her house, I was like, dude, I felt so bad the other day when you didn't get one that I went and searched for another one so you could have one too because I, you just put so many bad vibes into that one. You were so pissed. She didn't even apologize. And she was always, you know, wanting to fucking do photo shoots and social media is like legitimately her entire life. She's willing to fucking lie like a psychopath, psychological, psychological, pathological liar. She's pathologically lying to everyone about everything in her life. Like nothing is even real. And wow, you can really create like a whole facade, but like considering that my brand was all about being real and like we became friends i had to hide and not tell about any of the fun things we were doing because she wanted to look like a precious innocent angel as she is not we had a friendship i thought it sucks because when i look back i'm like wow was she literally doing all these things just to fucking hold them against me at the end of one day because we would do photo shoots and she would buy random 
things to have a theme photo shoot and sometimes she would buy things that like she did never intend on taking photos of with herself because we would always take turns taking photos of each other that was that's a lie we did sometimes usually i was taking photos of her and we were creating like dope content for her and i was you know being an assistant so to speak without even getting paid for it but i was you know making sure the hair was right and you know taking the videos and doing doing shit that i shouldn't have been because i shouldn't have been getting paid for it at the time i thought that we were fucking friends and you know we're just on this fucking content creation journey together we were not she was on the journey and she wanted me to be on the journey with her but she also didn't want me to be on the journey because if i got better than her that would make her mad because she knows what she's doing so let's fast forward me and this girl have been friends for quite some time, about a year and a half or so. I'm struggling mentally living in Las Vegas, trying to make my rent, hating my job, going through a breakup, not even divorced yet, but going through it, definitely going through it. And at the time my ex decided to move out of the city that we were staying near. And like this person, my ex was, you know, my life life for almost half my life. So. They just up and move. I have nobody besides this girl and she had already moved, mind you. She moved to California. So I live in a city where none of my friends are. I have nobody. And I meet Joelle. I meet my fucking wonderful manager, social media guru, life coach. <laughs> I meet him at a T-Mobile that I was working at. He asked me, why the fuck are you working here? You know, I want to help girls create their, you know, content empire. And I, you know, want to get into that. And I was just like, at the time, my friend had basically made me feel like letting any sort of men in to get in on this fucking cash grab of OnlyFans content was stupid. They're just trying to fucking use us, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of was like, this guy's full of shit, right? So I don't message him for a while. We follow each other on social media. We're watching each other's journey. That's really cool, you know? Eventually, I meet up with him to purchase a t-shirt. And when I purchase this t-shirt, we talk about creating business together. You know, let's fucking do it. And I was like, you know what? I'm fucking getting ready to go all in. Let's fucking do it because I need some help and I don't want to do it alone. I just, I don't want to do it alone. This pissed my friend off. She was so mad. Why are you going to fucking hire somebody? Why are you hiring somebody? They just are going to use you to make money. If he has the fucking tools and the possibilities to be worth the percentage that we're going to offer him, like I'm gonna pay him that, then I'm gonna do it. I'm not a do-it-myself kind of girl. I am to an extent, but when it comes to some of the businessy things, things that my artist mind doesn't know how to do. Also, I didn't go to college, didn't, and you don't have to go to college for these things, but like in my mind, I am some dumb bitch that worked at T-Mobile for eight years. <laughs> so, so what the fuck do I know besides selling cell phones? That's how I felt like at the time, like I need somebody who's more business mindset. She's like, I was gonna do this for you. I wanted to do this for you, but you're not. You're kind of just like trying to push me into what you think I should do. You should do this, you should do that. And then I started doing some of these things that she was suggesting on top of what my manager was suggesting. She fucking lost her mind. Like when I suggested it, why aren't you trying to do it? And I, I couldn't handle all the negative energy. I was like creating this little biz but I create a YouTube channel and have like, you know, him editing videos for me and that sent her over to the edge. Like I was some fucking criminal for not editing my own YouTube videos. And I was like, do you know how many actual YouTubers are not editing their own videos? <sighs> Most of them. Granted, some of them are, but I am trying to be in like a million different places at once. So I can't do that on top of actually having a real job at that time. But like, we have so many red flags and that's just towards the end of our friendship. I was trying to heal my inside self, trying to heal inside, outside. I need a fucking foundation. And she's totally content with, you know, being fucking miserable, but pretending like she's happy, like no actual internal work is going on to actually heal herself, you know? Essentially, I let this person who was never really my friend really consume my life. When I would get off of work some days, I would race over to her house and go let my dog out really quick and race over to her house so that I could, you know, do whatever photo shoot we were doing for the day. We could go on a little excursion. I would go drive us around. I was driving us around, oh my, I was a chauffeur. <laughs> 
she filled up the car with gas don't get me wrong she put gas in the car sometimes but never one time during the summer when i had no ac in my car did she offer to uh, did she offer to drive she just was content with letting her makeup melt off her face in 120 plus degrees and then when i tried to get it fixed one of her fans one of her fans Mind you, they're not both of our fans. It's her fan because he's the one sending her large amounts of money on OnlyFans every day and paying for her coffees and DoorDashes and buying her all kinds of gifts and this, that, the other thing, whatever. It's her fan. And was like, hey, I wanna help get your AC fixed. I can help you fix it. Like, you help so-and-so all the time and I just wanna help you. And I was like, you know what? Damn toot and straight. I will accept this because I was really struggling. My top fan, my biggest fan at the time, he couldn't help. He had already, you know, helped a little bit too much for the time or didn't want to. I don't know. She fucking loses her mind when she finds out that this fan had sent me $500. When were you going to tell him he'd already sent you the money and wasn't blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. He wants to help take care of a basic life necessity in the city that we live in. We live in a hot place and he wanted to help me. And she goes, I was going to lend you the money and you were going to pay me back. And I was going to teach you a lesson about having to pay people back. I know how loans work, bitch. And if I'm going to take the money for free and not have to give it back, I'm going to do that every day, every single fucking time. Okay. And so would she. That's where like, she doesn't know anything about actual financial crisis or being financially in a struggle because she acted like she was going to teach me a lesson. What do you know about financial struggles and like situations when you literally have people helping you with your finances? When you run out of money in your bank account, you just message somebody and they make sure there's more money in there because that's the privilege that you have. A lot of our fucking issues, now that I think about it, stem around the fact that we were in different classes of financial situations. I was poor. I am poor. <laughs> I'm not going to always be poor, but I was poor. <laughs> Versus her, who has never known what being poor is like in her life. So she's up here in her mind, and I'm down here, and I'm just some like lowly little, you can poop on me. But like she was fake about it and nice about it, right? So she was like shitting on me with candy. But then when you get to the center of the Tootsie Pop, it's actually a piece of poop. So here I am just rambling about what a shitty friend I had. Is that okay? I don't know, but I'm doing it. I gotta get it out. I don't like spewing my nonsense, but I also do because it feels good to get it out and like release it because I've been building it up for a while and I've learned that I was willing to just be around people because I didn't want to be alone, because I was alone. I didn't have, you know, like I said, my partner that I had for half my life anymore. We decided to not be together, right? So here I am all alone and I'm filling my time with somebody else because I don't know how to process the breakup that I'm going through, the financial shenanigans that I'm experiencing as a single person now. There's just a lot that was going on and I just didn't want to be alone. I'd rather uh, surround myself with dumbasses. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> be alone. And now I'm home alone. It's very boring. And like, I like chaos. Chaos feels exciting, but it also has gotten me into a lot of trouble. And that is where we're going to have to go to part two, where we start talking about the boyfriend, man, person that I spent too much time with. And he fucked me over and made me believe that he liked me when he just wanted to use me for his financial gain. So come back for another video. <laughs> hear about my misfortunes if you will so thanks for being here thanks for watching if you make it to the end if you didn't you if you're that bitch that bitch i'm talking about yeah i'm talking about you -o. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in there or do you know what you should you bitch but i'm still talking about you so i hope you feel good that like somebody's on your mind <laughs> or i'm I'm gonna end it now. Okay. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you for watching. 
Fuck them hoes. Fuck those Joes. See you in part two.